Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel and today we're going to work on this little corner of the Ravenclaw common room. It is the corner where I will be doing a book nook. So I will be making a bench here and then like I did with the library here on the outside, I will make bookcases on the outside here as well. And the bookcase will probably continue on this side. Let's just get started. So let me share my plans first. So what I have in mind for this corner is you just saw the window, which is this one. And then there will be a bench there and a bench there. This one will be a slightly shorter than this one because I want to make a little step here just to give a little bit more detail to that. Um, I will upholster the bench four inch, five inch, 1.5 inch deep. There will be books on here. And then there will be portraits here, which I don't have yet, but they will come eventually. It's one of the last things I will do. And then on the outside here will be another two bookcases, just like on the outside of the library on the base floor. So let's do this. So I have some scrap pieces here. And from this piece, I'm going to make the seating area. So I need two five inch pieces because this will be five inch and this will be against it. But then this entire piece will be four inch because this one inch piece will be sitting inside there. And then one and a half inch, one and a half and three. There we have the benches. And now you can see that this part is still five inches and this part is four inches or three and a half inch, I think. Three and a half, because this is an inch and a half. Yeah, I think I need to do the upholstery first. So let's grab some bedding. I did say bedding, but I'm gonna go with felt because it's cheaper. Bedding here in Australia is very, very expensive. And I just don't wanna pay that for a miniature anyway. This works just as well. And let's see how many layers I need to do. So I'll glue one on first. This is just simple Fabri-Tac glue. You can cut out the felt around. Let's just glue this one on here too. I might make that a bit more squishy, so I might just do that again. And there is the second one. Now, I think I will glue them together and then upholster because then it is one, one bench instead of a broken up part here. So I think I might just do that. For that, however, I will be using my hot glue gun. I have powered it up and it's all ready to go. So let's stick this together first. There we have that. Got a little bit, bit snug, um, but that is okay. Just need to make sure that I don't pull it too much one way. The reason why I'm gluing it on the side and not on the bench is so that there is no glue going to show through there at all. By the way, I'm not an, uh, an expert spurt at upholstering, so I'm just going with the flow. It's a bit, a bit like book binding, just wrap it around. Now this little flap, I'm going to, to glue on the inside there and not at the front because the inside we will not see. Same for that side. Just using a popsicle stick for that so I don't burn my fingers. And 
was thinking of just tucking it under, but I might actually just cut it off. And then there will be a layer there on top of that. So um, I do have some faux metallic leather. It's like a, um, a bronze. So I think I might actually use that. I have not used that yet in this project, but I do have it put aside for this project. So that looks pretty good. So I need to glue that middle bit down. I am really happy with this and uh, I hope you like it too. It's um, simple, but effective and a little bit squishy. So it's not that we're gonna sit on it, but you know, there we have that. And that goes along with the chairs. Now, let me get that trim that I've got so we can attach that to the front. Here it is. It's metallic faux leather and I picked it up at an, uh, a thrift store for like two bucks and I had two of them. I sent another one to a friend, but um, it looks like bronze to me. Um, so yeah, let's stick a strip along here to finish that off. There we have it. Just a subtle line of bronze there. I did not use this on the chairs because it's very, very bright and obnoxious if you just put it at the front of something. And I don't think that would look right. See that? It's very shiny. But this is on the side and it's not in your face. It's more subdued. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this. I do notice that the top here is white. And you know what that means. I need to paint that black or a very dark blue. And I'm just going to very slightly paint that edge because it's going to bother me otherwise. And let's paint that edge. It's ever so slightly, but it's, it's that edge, the edge of that bronze strip. I think I have all the um, parts covered now. Now we have a nice, dark blue edge instead of that obnoxious white and it just blends in nice all right i was just checking what looked better the one and a half inch high or one inch high i think one inch high would be the best look the other one is just too high so i am going to build it up back so basically that behind it and then make the partitions for the book cases and um, then I can basically already place it inside the diorama and uh, place the books in and then we need to make some cushions for on the bench of course. So because this is the back, I'm not really phased on the smudginess of it. It's it's okay. I won't see that anyway. Same for the premium cotton sateen. But, uh, it won't show up. Put glue on here and then attach it. There we go. We have a bench with a storage space for books underneath what else would you put under there right and there we have some partitions that looks really really good if i may say so myself so now i want to cover up those partitions with strips of paper just because it looks better. I 
and there we have that so there's the detail in that it's it's just a nicer look and uh, more clean so this can basically be placed in the common room now let's uh let's have a look what it looks like here we are in the still empty corner and here is the bench so i think some books would be in order and of course i need to build another two bookcases there so let's go ahead and do that before i start the uh, bookcases i want to glue this down on this piece of paper so i can place the books inside and then place the entire thing inside the miniature so i'm going to trace around cut it out glue it on and then build some bookcases Now I can just stick that under and then I can place and stick the books inside and then place this entire thing inside the miniature. I made all these little book clusters and now I can just glue them underneath here. There's all the books inside and let's move on to the bookcases. The bookcases need to be nine inches tall by two and a half wide and one inch deep. So I've got a big sheet of uh, foam board here and I'm going to cut it out and then I'll be back with you because the cutting out is the same as what I did for the cabinets that went next to the library. Here we have the book nook or reading nook so far. So I've filled all the bookcases just like the ones below it and um, all the books are glued into place and the bookcases are also glued against the, the bench. Reason is because I can now take it out and make a rod across here to make curtains. So eventually this will sit there and then you can close the curtains if you want to study in the study nook. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the ceiling just yet, so that might stay open for now. I will eventually put lights in it, but not in this video, but I will work on the rod now. I also had a go at making a pillow. So it's basically a square that I've sewn together inside out, uh, turned it right side out and then glued, filled it with... Um, these little weight pallets that you normally put in the bottom of soft toys to make them sit. So this pillow is a bit heavier, so it sit, stays down. And then the end I just glued together with hot glue. I'm sorry among, for the seamstresses amongst us. I'm, I'm, I was a bit lazy. And then I've sewn these buttons in just to tie it in with the chairs. Um, different buttons, but cute all the same. And then they can kind of sit like so. And I will make a couple more and probably from some different material as well, just to give it a bit more contrast, probably in the same fabric as I will do the curtains in. So let's work on the curtains now. Curtains. We have the cabinets here and I've reinforced it a little bit more with some hot glue everywhere around where I cannot see it. I have this old hoop and it's it's basically a, a macrame or embroidery hoop. I needed a sturdy piece of metal that doesn't bend. And I want to have that sitting right there. I want to make it a little bit longer so I can stick it into the foam on the sides. So I've marked it there and there. So if I cut it there, it will be flush with the um, bookcases. If I cut it there, it will go into the wall, which is probably what I want because it will make it more sturdy. So let me see if I can cut that. Okay. I think I need to find something else because this is not working. I might soak a skewer in some water and then attach it, attach it to this thing and then see if it warps the way I want it to, and then go from there. So this skewer is wet and I have to work fast now. Otherwise I won't be able to manipulate it anymore because as soon as it goes cold, 
and dries, that's it. That's the end of it. I'm just trying to attach that with washi tape. So I had three skewers sitting in water, hot boiled water, straight from the kettle. And one of them snapped as soon as I, want, uh, as I tried to bend it. And the other one did not quite bend like this one. So it, it is just trial and error, I suppose. And these are bamboo skewers. So if that is any help, I don't know. This is the first time me trying it. And we want to take all the moisture out of this. So I'm just going to blast that with my hair dryer until this feels mostly dry. And then I can probably take the tape off, but I want to make sure that it's mostly there. And I can see that it doesn't really reach where I want it to reach. So I might have to put it at the front there or just there and not all the way to the wall. But that's okay. I'm okay with that because this skewer is a little bit thinner than the uh, metal. So it doesn't really matter if that doesn't fully reach and I can just put it through the uh, foam, I suppose. I'll have a look how to attach that. Okay, so it's not completely bent like the circle, but I can still bend it. It's still a little bit bendy. So what I will do now, I think I'm just gonna stick it in there and then stick it in there. So I'm gonna take my awl and make a hole there. Let's do the same on the other side. All right. Ah, look at that. I don't even have to use glue. Don't you just love it when it works out? <laughs> there it is. Um, curtain, we're all done. Now I just need to make the curtains. So there you go. It looks ready to go. I love it. All right, um, let's paint this. Um, I think a bronze. Let's go with black first so the bronze can attach a bit more better. A bit more better, a bit better. And uh, yeah, black first. Okay, whilst that rod is drying, I am going to cut out the curtain fabric. I have it here and it's naturally, well, naturally, this fabric is just pleated this way. Yes, I have tried to iron it, but it just doesn't come out. It's just the way the fabric is and when it's all gathered up, it is actually really nice as curtain fabric. So I'm just going to cut it there and then lengthways I can cut it in half because that is about what we want. Now, when I stretch this, it will curl. So what I want to do, I want to glue that inside just a smidge like that. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac glue for that. I'm going to do that for both sides, otherwise it will just curl. Using the tiniest bit and then flipping it over. Because I hate to sew this fabric. This fabric is really not friendly. There we have that. And now I can just drape that over here and put it on the side like that. So I'm just going to attach that because it's a little bit tricky to show you on camera and then I'll be back. So I said I was gonna make that rod bronze, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, it's a little bit damaged because of the hot glue, but that's okay because if I just pleat it like that and cover the whole front with that curtain and then put it to the side like so, we have that red little reading nook that I really like with that curtain and I just need to make some tie backs for the curtains. Uh, and then we have the reading nook done. I, I love it. Um, I 
don't know what I'm going to do with the ceiling yet, but we will get to it when we get to it, when I make the top of the common room. But so far, uh, I love this. Let's make the tie backs. I think I have some rope somewhere that I can use for that. By the way, I did this by just folding it over and gluing it down with hot glue. It was not a big deal. It was not hard at all. Um, but yeah, it's that easy. I did not sew anything, but it does look rather good. I did the same thing with Dumbledore's office, but they were not uh, movable. But these are. I can still move these open and close if I want to. Anyway, let's let's make those tie backs. So I have this kind of crocheted thread, and I think this is the best thing for the tie back. So I'm just going to make a knot at one end so I can create a little loop. There's my loop. It's very tiny. And then I can cut this off. And then on the other side, I can make another loop as well. Okay, I've just measured the loop should be around there. And this I'll just cut up there. You won't really see that anyway. This I will cut up there. But I kind of want to color that with the ink. So it is bronze. But this is what we've got. It's basically a loop, a piece of string and another loop. And then I've attached tiny hooks on either side. So one loop is going to go there and it's going to curve around the curtain and then it will hang like that. But it's sideways and I can't really show you. So let's have a look what the final result looks like. And here is the final book reading nook. I love how this turned out. I still have to make a few more pillows, but there is one and the curtain tiebacks are in. I really, really like how it turned out. And, uh, I hope you do too. Let me know in the comments down below and um, also the top of this thing. We will get to that a little bit later when I'm going to work on the top of the entire common room. So thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.